News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali on TV One. And a very good evening and a warm welcome to Newsline Live. And uh, lovely new background, uh, the production team uh, with uh, Hashina and Namiksha have done a grand job. And uh, well done to them. But uh, back to business. The power is a mess. Some people say that the power has been a mess since 1948. But I'm not really talking about political power. I'm talking about electricity, energy, and that sort of thing. That whole industry seems to be in a mess. And uh, as always, it's the public who are expected to pay the bill. And uh, if Aragalea has anything to do with it, I think the public have got fed up of listening to all that tosh. And so today, we thought we'd bring somebody in who knows a little bit about, a bit more about the power sector. And uh, he is, of course, here in his capacity of the, being the General Secretary of the National Chamber of Commerce, uh, Mr. Lakmal Fernando. Very good evening to you, Lakmal, and welcome to the program. Good evening for us. Thank you very much. But really, the power industry is a mess, isn't it? It is. It has been and it will be. But what, what, what is the, I mean, I find this, it beggars belief because, you know, we have all these consumers out here who need electricity. 6.5 million. Yeah. So 6.5 million, it's nearly 6.9 million. Remember that magic figure that somebody got elected with? So 6.5 million, usually they're over 18, so they're voters, and yet successive governments don't want to deliver something that will energize these 6.5 million people to vote their way. Because, But what is holding it back? Why is it that we, I, I hear reports that we now need um, emergency power, standby power, whatever you want to call it. Again, surely, I, I don't know, I'll tell you, I am personally fed up of listening to this story. Because it's been going on since, I think, 1996. We've had all these years, 4 plus 23, 27 years, to plan on why we shouldn't be at the beck and call of providers of emergency power. Why? Just tell me why. You know, we have been historically a zero carbon emission country. Right. Right. Uh, in the electricity sector. We were 100% running on hydro, yeah. then naturally the, the demand grew. Yeah. As a result, we moved into coal and we moved into diesel oh. without introducing renewable energy. Of course, at that time, there were uh, good reasons for it because other than the hydro, yeah. the other renewable energy uh, sources were expensive at that time. But latter part of the time, these things became very affordable. And that's the time that, you know, we should have gone into it. Yeah. But we did not go there as much as that we would have had to. You talk about back in the days. Back in the days. Right. Even today, what you and I are paying yeah. is as a result of not moving into renewables at the right time. Mm -hmm. So not keeping abreast, really. That's right. Uh, I just want to remind uh, everyone of a little story. Lee Kuan Yew once said about Singapore and casinos, he said, over my dead body. Years later, he was asked about the facility that is now, I think it was $400, $500 million project. Uh, and you know, he was asked about that. How come you got a casino then? And he said, well, it was very simple. Singapore had to keep abreast Otherwise, other countries would have taken advantage of it. And so we made that decision. Today, that facility earns the state of Singapore, I think, in taxes alone, around two billion US dollars. That's one hell of investment. So that story, I remember it now because of what you just said, that we haven't kept abreast of the events. We are not changing with times. What precludes our decision-makers from not keeping abreast? 
You see, uh, we have had a very uh, backward uh, utility mm -hmm. towards renewable energy. Not only backward, they were basically, you know, blocking renewable energy. That had been our problem. I believe, uh, you know, within the next one and a half to two months, that's going to change yeah. with the unbundling of the utility. So with that, there are so many other things coming onto the table, which is uh, healthy for the economy, healthy yeah. for the country. Uh, because you see, we are sitting on a gold mine. Uh, we have about 210 to 220 gigawatts of renewable energy potential. Okay. Out of this, about uh, say 50-50, wind and solar. Yeah. So, in order for us to reach our 2030 targets of becoming a 70% renewable energy in the electricity alone, yeah. What we need is about eight gigawatts of renewable energy. This is comprising four, four gigawatts of uh, probably solar or four, four gigawatts of wind. Right. And uh, we all are aware the problems that we are having in our uh, forex deficits. Yes. So while trying to improve our export basket, yeah. I think it is uh, it's primarily important for us to look at new products like energy exportation. Hmm. Now, there are discussions that we are having with uh, India yeah. to move in with a HVDC cable number one, first place. And now there is a discussion about having connecting the two countries through a bridge, uh, which is going to be uh, cheaper than having a HVDC cable. So these kind of things are very important for a country mm -hmm. like Sri Lanka, especially having a renewable energy potential of 220 gigawatts. Right. That is massive. Uh, that, that's the potential. That's the potential. What do we got in actual Right now, uh, our hydro, of course, I mean, it, it has been there for a long time, large yeah. hydros. Yeah. And the new uh, hydros that we can develop, the mini hydros, the potential is about 200 megawatts. Right. But that is very difficult to tap, you know, un inaccessible locations. Yeah. And the cost of tapping it is very high. I'm also told that uh, somebody who has an interest in mini hydros told me that there was something like... I, I can't remember the exact figure, but about 11 to 12 different uh, permissions you can get. You need before. 28. Oh, right. So it's 28. Yes. Okay. So it's charming. Uh, yes. I, I mean, you know. Not only for, you know, mini hydro, all the renewable energy projects, you have to get the approvals. Right. So there are various approvals that you're supposed to be taking. And uh, now, if I tell you about, uh, about what is available. Yeah. Now, we have about 200 megawatts of renewable energy potential. Right. And we have about 1,100 gigawatts yeah. of solar potential yeah. and similar capacity of wind potential. Yeah. And what we need for us to become 70% renewables in 2030 is only 8 gigawatts. Oh, okay. Right? So that's small. So the balance can be going into various types of energy sources like you know green hydrogen making green, hy green oh. hydrogen because we will have to join this bandwagon early if you don't join it early there will be other players who will have these kind of facilities now, even right now while we are speaking here the australia is building a line yeah. from hvdc line from darwin to singapore right to supply two gigawatts of energy right solar so while we are speaking while we are sleeping yeah. the others are act very active so we will have to connect ourselves to India. Through India, we should have multilateral agreements in order for us to trade energy. It can be buying, it can be selling, but it should be multilateral. No, don't forget that it, bilateral agreements with India is not going to take us anywhere. Hmm. Our agreements with India should be multilateral. Right. Then if Bhutan is having excess power, if we don't have power at that time from solar, we can buy from Bhutan through the Indian network. Right. But if we have only bilateral agreements, the India will buy it from Bhutan and sell it to us. Oh, I see. I, 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 I understand the, the connotation there. Yeah. Um, okay, but tell me, you know, 27 years of uh, emergency power, a whole generation of CEB engineers have joined the CEB and retired. And in between, are you telling me that these 
extraordinarily very clever uh, people, educated, and they've, you know, they've been to universities and they've, they, they've, they've paid quite well by our standards. Let's get that clear. They're not some uh, government official who's leaving their drawer open, hoping for some money to be put in it. They're not that kind. But it is absolutely inexcusable that they couldn't make forward plans so that we wouldn't have to rely on uh, traders of electricity, emergency power, or that we wouldn't be at the mercy of the so-called so -called diesel lobby. Yes, I fully agree with you. Uh, a good example is the situation that we are facing today. Yeah. Now, the southern grid is not having enough energy. Indeed. So they are planning to uh, you know, do various things, which is including buying emergency power. Yeah. You can you know, beautifully dress the bride in different other names, but of course. it's emergency power. Yeah. We all know that this year, 2023, is an El Nino year. Right? So these are the, the, the I'm just showing these yeah. things because very well predicted. And Sri Lanka, if you look at the map, it's a good hydro year. Yes. But the catchment areas are all in red. So no water. No water. Right. And we have been planning for 4,500 gigawatt hours of hydro, which is not going to come. So as a result, yeah. we will end up going in for emergency power. <coughs> Because uh, when you are in an El Nino situation, when, the, when our reservoirs are going to be dry, we will forever have this issue. And on top of everything, we have scheduled, yeah. not actually plant one, for a scheduled maintenance. So usually okay. these kind of things cannot be done in an El Nino year. Right. Because we should have done it last year, because last year was a good hydro year. Now this year is a dry year. Right. So we have planned for to, to close down Norachole uh, plant one for a considerable period, right? And plant two is down now. So Norachole being closed for essentially maintenance, work. scheduled maintenance, scheduled maintenance. But scheduled maintenance should have been done in a good hydro year. Okay. Had it been advanced to the previous year, it was a good good hydro so, year. So perhaps our engineers, sorry chaps, but it doesn't look like you're that clever after all. Unless there is some other collateral purpose, is is our in, is this industry steeped in corruption? Let's get it out of the way. I think what else can we do? Can, what else can we say? Yeah. Now, Southern Grid was short of power for the last nine years. Right. What have we done? I don't think uh, we have done anything substantial for us to get rid of the emergency power in the Southern Grid alone. Now, if you, if you look at the emergency power to the south, CB is unable to make the voltage levels of the southern part of the country during day peak and night peak without support of summer level. Right? Now, when the summer level, this problem occurred in 2015 when PPAs of the private plant operators expired in 2014. Right. Still for nine years, this has not been resolved. It should have been resolved within a year or two mm -hmm. with, with a simple solution, with renewable energy. Now, instead, they always go and buy emergency power from private plant operators. Mm. A lot of these procurement were illegal. Once uh, a senior DGM who opposed this was completely sidelined and, you know, basically interdicted, who opposed the illegal procurement of emergency power. So to that level, they go. Um, let's, let's, come, let's go for a, bro a little break, shall we, and take a peek at this evening's headline news. Uh, tonight, uh, our uh, news is being read by uh, uh, Ravi Gavage and uh, Namiksha Gunasekra. Let's take a peek at the headlines. See you on the other side. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali on TV One. University students protest in Colombo. Police use water cannons to crack down on protest and make 20 arrests. 
Satyagraha by rice farmers in Ambilipitiya called off temporarily. Opposition leader calls for measures to prevent brawls over water among local farmers. Opposition claims president should not interfere with parliament agenda. Another special research vessel operated by China's Navy in Colombo. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali on TV One. And welcome back to Newsline. I'm in conversation with Mr. Lakmal Fernando, the Honorary Secretary at the National Chamber of Commerce. We're discussing power and why power is in a mess. Not political power, but electrical bits and pieces. But, uh, Lakmal, what uh, is... Okay, let's ask this question a different way. The CPC, are we doing all right now? I doubt. If CB is, CPC is doing all right, then we should be making the same amount of profits what the uh, LIOC is making. Okay. But what's the disparity like? Massive. Okay. Uh, Give us an example. The LIOC profits grew from uh, 1 billion to some 40 odd billion rupees. In what sort of period of time? Within a year. Oh, in, yeah. in a year? Within a year. Forgive me. Carry yeah. on. So, <coughs> while CPC is still not breaking even. So but now why, it's... Why not, do they have this particular problem? Uh, I don't want to just I say th it's think, inefficiency. I think, I think it's... But uh, what is it? Uh, anyone to, you know, do your math. Yeah. It's basically, when you look at the, the buying prices, of LIOC, uh, they are buying from the world market yeah. at the appropriate price, while possibly CPC is buying um, in a different uh, level of pricing. Yeah, that's that's the only explanation that an average human being can come into. If not, there is no reason for CPC to make losses and LIOC to. Make profits. Okay, let me ask this you this nature. question. I mean, you might know the answer because you're in the industry sort of thing. But is there a possibility, I'm not trying to make an excuse for CPC, but is there a possibility that because CPC is government owned and all that, that they have to do business in certain remote areas uh, where there's not much of demand, but they still need to serve it in the national interest and so therefore the costs are high. Could that be one of the reasons they're making a loss? A very small percentage, I would say. Okay. Very small percentage. Uh, pr primarily, the, the fuel prices in Sri Lanka is determined by CPC based on their costs. So as a result, okay. an efficiently run company like, uh, you know, LIOC yeah. can make profits. Right. So, so at the end of the day, the bottom line is, it depends on how much we buy it in. Not really. Then we should be making profits. Yes, but we're not. Yeah. So that means that we're not. We are buying it incorrectly. Possibly. That's that. That's the only explanation that anyone can think of. Right. Um, I know that the the recently uh, retired uh, managing director of uh, the CPC, Admiral Ravi Vijayagunratna, was telling me that uh, they discovered uh, a way in which there was a leak but it was a leak in terms of their money, and they plugged the leak. Because they say, he, uh, in this uh, information that I got in, this, in a conversation, was that they maintained that there was a X amount percentage of uh, leakage, waste, between the point where, uh, out at sea, where the tankers come and connect up to the uh, pipeline. And in that exercise, that they lost something like one or two percent. He, he, being a maritime man, he, when he looked at it, he knew this was a lie, because he said two percent of a hundred thousand tons is quite an oil slick, Massive. and we don't see an oil slick. So he said he knew where to look at this pretend uh, nonsense. I think so, this is nothing new. It's nothing new, but it must have been going on for years. Yeah, because these things were there during the times of, I think, 1977, 78, 79, I remember. Okay. There was an oil well in somewhere in Kalania. 
<laughs> inside the house? Right, okay. Yeah. I can't remember. Yes, I think yeah. I do, yeah. yes. <laughs> A very yeah. famous man. Yeah. Um, so uh, what, what can we do? What should the government be doing? What can, what can the Chamber of Commerce do? You see, we will have to lobby. Uh, as, as an organization, it is our responsibility <coughs> to protect the interests of the investors. Yeah. And get more and more investors, whether it is uh, local or foreign, yeah. to become entrepreneurs and develop their businesses. Right. But right now, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of businesses are closing. Why? Because, uh, of course, we are in a global recession. Yeah. Our uh, global economy has contracted massively over the last uh, one and a half years due to COVID and various other elements. Uh, as a result, we are, we are having an export-oriented uh, economy, so our economy also has shrunk. Right. But having said that, I wouldn't say that uh, it is proportionate to the world economic contraction. Our economic contraction is much bigger because in conducive situation in the country. Now, a business that has been there for 40 years mm. in Sri Lanka closed down a few months ago putting 1,600 people into the roads because he can't afford the electricity prices of the country. Hmm. So where should we go in terms of electricity? Should we go nuclear? No. Nuclear is not a solution for Sri Lanka. Okay. Because uh, the nuclear to a small 62,500 kilometers island like Sri Lanka is a disaster. Right. One small... We are, come on. We are, we are running a coal it's, plant. So you're talking about a safety factor. Safety factor. We are running a coal plant. Yeah. Right? All three plants yeah. are running illegally. Illegally? It's, it does not comply to the environmental standards. Oh. So ideally it should be closed down. Right. But it is not going to be closed down because the question that they ask is, if we close down, of course, naturally, there is going to be a problem in the country. There is going to be a major energy shortage. So we are running it by putting hundreds of thousands of people in trouble. So imagine what it is going to be, what it is going to be looks like with a nuclear plant. Nuclear plant, there is no, nothing in between. Mm. Either it is running perfectly yeah. or it's a disaster. Look at what happened in J Japan. Right. right, Japan. Japanese plants are, you know, the technologically most advanced plants, but they are still trying, struggling, to come out of their nuclear disaster. They have already spent 150 billion dollars, only for to remove the contaminated water. You talk about Hiroshima. Yeah. Yeah. Not Hiroshima. No. This is about the nuclear disaster that they have had recently. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. So in such situation, now it is all unpredicted. You know what? What so happened? So, what, what are you saying that we we can't afford to take the chance because of the size of we our country? We can't. We can't because removal of nuclear debris yeah. is going to be a massive, massive cost to the country. What about? Uh, and in, we can't afford it. In the last government, we had uh, a lot of talk about something called LNG. What about LNG then? You are talking about gas, basically, right. because we are talking about liquid uh, natural gas, because yeah. we have to transport it in liquid form. Right. You see, people try to classify this now. We, we had this argument uh, during the, uh, the previous president's time also. Yeah. When previous president wanted 80% renewable energy in the national grid, yeah. uh, one person from the uh, utility lobbied for 80% clean energy. Right. And they classified uh, gas as a clean energy source. Right. But there is no hydrocarbon based energy source that is clean. Okay. It is cleaner compared to coal. Right. But it's not clean energy. And uh, so what, ideally, what would the ideal scenario be? The entire world is moving towards renewables. Right. And there is no choice in the matter. Right. Because we don't have dollars. Right. Right? We are a dollar-deprived country. Yeah. And for us to you know, stand on our own feet, yeah. the only solution is for us to move into renewable energy. I'll take a small example. Now, the problem that we have in the, the southern part of the country yeah. can be solved with 100 megawatts of floating solar plant right. in the Chandrika weather right. and with you know, about 100 megawatts of battery capacity. 
which is going to be way less expensive than all the expansions what we are but right. it's not been done why? and this is this is a, this is a six a months why? plan this is a right. six months plan right. we can finish this job maximum within a one year and we can retain all these extra amounts of money that we are spending for emergency power it's yeah, not well, happening it's not happening for the last nine years for us but i i had the same uh, discussion with the uh, uh, cabinet minister not cabinet minister in charge of electricity but another cabinet minister at the time and he he had this cabinet paper in which uh, they were proposing to get permission of the cabinet to bring in about uh, i think around 200 megawatts of power but i said to him instead of doing this what about uh, umawea and he said, and that's the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I met contractors who hadn't been paid and they couldn't do any more work and they were nearly bankrupting themselves. And then the CEB took it over mm -hmm. and finished off the rest. But, you know, in terms of investment in this country and so on, the story of those contractors um, will be a negative in our progress you know, march forward. It will be. You see, right now, our bankers have completely lost the appetite yeah. in financing the energy projects because of the, uh, you know, the bad payment history yes. of the utility. Yes. But uh, I think the, the current uh, power and energy minister, he did a considerable amount of work yeah. and put the house in order. Yeah. Now the renewable energy projects are being paid little by little. Yes. But this is not how we have planned. Right. The, when it comes to a you know energy business, yeah. you you expect a certain amount of latency, probably about three months. But anything beyond that, which is running into months and months, sometimes even 13, 14 months, is not acceptable because who is going to pay the balance? Pay for the balance time, because the bankers' facilities are very 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 straightforward. Yeah. So those things will have to be accommodated. So as long as we don't do our due diligence in terms of you know what we can afford, it's not going to be possible. Yeah. Now in the new electricity act, uh, the revision. Yeah. There'll be very interesting aspects coming in. There'll be you know energy wheeling coming in. So with the energy wheeling. Yeah. If ABC company wants to buy renewable energy from an XYZ company in Timbuktu in yeah. Sri Lanka, they can contract with them for a longer period and buy energy. Right. So it's going to be very flexible. Mm. So we will be encouraging a lot of renewable energy entrepreneurs. Yeah. Because first of all, we'll have to see for us now, uh, th there, is, there is a major hype about bringing in foreign investors for the renewable energy sector. Yes. But bringing in renewable uh, in foreign investors to the renewable energy sector is necessary yeah. at the right time. At the moment, we have so many entrepreneurs in Sri Lanka right. who can still move in for renewable energy projects and retain that money within the country. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you have the moment that you have the foreign investors coming in, don't take me wrong, I'm not negative towards it, I'm, yeah. I'm very positive, but for something like green hydrogen, new, new technologies, we should have the foreign investors coming in for such projects. Right. But not to just have a solar plant and sell electricity to the consumer. Right. Lakma Fernando, thank you very much for being my guest this evening on Newsline Live. Thank you very much for us. Thank for you. I, I hope that you won't give up and that you will uh, go on to represent the people's interest first and uh, try and bring some sort of uh, sense and stability in this whole business called power, electricity, that is. Thank you, Lakma. I will. Thank you. And that's the way it was on uh, Newsline Live this evening. And it's now time uh, for the um, primetime news team, read tonight by Ravi Gamage and Namik Gunasekra. Take care. Have a great evening as much as you can. And God bless you all. <laughs>